think this is gonna work. I think. All right, big fires, let's go. I did get me another bowl to see how much lecker I can catch without it going everywhere. I have not contained the dogs. Hey! <laughs> right, let's see. Let's see how we can do this. This fires needs to be repotted. There will be some grunting and there will be some background noise because once I get into this, I can't stop. Let's see how we're gonna do this. One person, let's go. Yeah, <clears throat> that green thing, that little bowl, that was uh, not a good idea. That kept moving. So we're gonna do it like this. Oh, and here comes King. Okay, eyes everywhere. <laughs> I don't want him to be going at any lecker beads. But she has to come out. This is gonna be a noisy one. Hi, welcome. What I plan to do is put her back into a single pot, smaller pot, but we have a lot of cleanup to do. And of course, there are still remnants of Vaseline from back in the day. And no, I did not soak her either. I've got seed pods. It's too much water, which is a bummer because I'm hoping not to destroy the new roots. But I have two pieces in here anyway seeing as they sort of grew apart and separate from each other. And I removed some old pseudobulbs back in the day. So yeah, she's gonna be set back, I think. <laughs> but it has to be done. Here she comes. Here she comes. Oh, I'm not too disappointed about the roots. too bad you guys it's not too bad she's taken on the shape of the pot and I was going to reduce her into a smaller pot but oh my um yeah we might have to have a change of plans here but first of all goodness me these terrestrial roots cannot dry out so I've got a bucket of plain water not just my sprayer the whole nine yards here next to me I'm gonna just keep watering her in every once in a while. All right, while I clean that lecker up so that I can reuse it for this fires, I am going to cover up the pot as best as possible to protect the roots from drying out. So this is just a black cloth, kitchen cloth, saturated with RO water. And that should do it for now, depending how long the lecker takes to clean. And if I have to, I shall keep misting it to keep it damp. Oh boy, lecker time. All right, let's do this. <laughs> I think we are now four hours into this project and I will explain why. Excuse me for the heavy breathing. Let's see, you get into shot. Let's see, something like that. I'm trying to protect the spike that has the seed pods on it. We'll see how long that lasts. But anyway, my work table is prepped. It is now 4 p.m. <laughs> I have daylight until about 8 p.m. So I've got four hours to get this done. And if I don't get it done, then of course we will resume the video tomorrow. But what I did do in the meantime is actually separate out the lecker. But lecker that I will be reusing that was already in the pot only because I want 
large pieces at the bottom and then to fill around with smaller bits and i'm going to have to add fresh lecker because obviously what is going to come off as i clean the root ball of these two pieces of fires will also need to be cleaned separate and sterilized the other lecker that i cleaned was only washed and dead roots and such were removed i did not boil it or sterilize it seeing as it's going back into the same pot okay what we're going to do now is remove the dead back bulbs because i think that's going to help me as well when i pull out any dead roots so i don't have to go in one root at a time because what happened here a couple of summers ago i was trying to find the ideal location for my fires and i put her on the east side but i cooked the pseudobulbs in the back so while i try to <laughs> keep everything in shot and also protect that spike with the seed pods on I want to get into these two bulbs and take them off. I would like to take the third one off, but I doubt that that's a good idea because that doesn't leave me much with the growth that is currently growing. But that was pretty easy. So we've got those off. And let's see if we can't just pull them out because they, they don't serve any purpose. Whatever stays in the pot will also help me maintain a little bit of the mess <laughs> of this repot now you may see that some roots are still viable but not all so that is already showing me resistance and i have to make sure that i'm protecting everything that i still need and this is going to be very very top heavy these are burnt as well let's get rid of them I have a little growth coming here, but that's not my main priority at the moment. Okay, they have been severed. That's great. Now I'm going to change your camera angle and I'm going to tilt the pot over and see where we're at. Let's deal with these pseudobulbs right here. Now, normally you could propagate something like this, absolutely, but you can see how absolutely roasted they were back in my attempt to find a, a spot where I could protect the leaves. So these are not going to be useful for any propagation at all. And I've got you at this angle just for a little bit or for as long as it is feasible for me to make sure I do not lose any lecker beads that would fall on the patio that I don't see. I know it's all a little bit fiddly and not really something I should waste your time with, but I have been building towards this project for many, many weeks knowing it was coming and have somewhat of a plan in my head how I, how I was going to execute it, you know? So I'm kind of sticking with that plan. I'm trying to improvise as, you know, challenges that I didn't anticipate come my way. But I'm going to take my sweet time. And you know what? It's a bit unfortunate because I should have prepared for a story time with this repot. I was so consumed with how I was going to do it, knowing how massive it was going to be of an undertaking that I'd never considered doing a story time. Oh well, never mind. At least it gives me opportunity to really focus on what I'm doing because this orchid is gonna be in some shock. Now they might be tough because they are terrestrials and all that fun stuff, you know, terrestrials are forgiving, etc. but there's only so much forgiveness an orchid will provide you with when you do this. And yes, I do want to separate them out. Unless I start to get into some form of a problem that makes it even worse, the shock factor worse, then of course I'll leave them together. But 
my plan is to separate them. Pot them in the same pot again, but separate them properly so that I can have another three, four years of them the way they are in the same pot. I did prepare a small pot for these two pieces based on what I was going to find. And I'm sorry about the traffic in the background. Necessary evil now that I'm right into this project, but I did prepare a small pot, but with a root system like this, even though I've got new roots growing, I won't be radical in decimating the root system that I see. So I'm already thinking it's going back in the big pot. Let's get that salty lecker out. And just to procrastinate a little bit, take off what's obvious. <laughs> yeah, so here we are. This is the first tag ever <laughs> that got eaten. <laughs> okay, don't need that. <laughs> oh dear, let's tickle the bottom a little bit. It's looking good. All right, my support is needed, unfortunately. It's the flimsy white one, which is great for small pots, but looks ridiculous and all bendy bendy on the long pots. And I was contemplating locking the doors so that the dogs don't come outside, but even that strategy would not have worked because I have to keep an eye on the Lekka beads, where they are going. If I don't do that, then I would probably have a dog making funny noises. So let them come outside. I just have to be super, super vigilant. I poured water through the pot while the pot was sitting there with a tea towel over it twice. It was starting to dry out at the surface, but uh, it's okay. The roots are nice and wet. And I have my sprayer because I'm going to need it shortly. And I have a bucket next to me with 300 parts per million of calcium magnesium, no seaweed, because I didn't want to be wasteful. I don't have much seaweed left for the season. So I only put calcium magnesium in that bucket. And once I separate a piece out, I'm going to put the whole thing into the bucket to soak while I work on one piece and then, you know, and switch it around. So everything is around me the way it should be. And I should not need to be stopping what I'm doing, trying to be as fast, but without rushing things as possible. I want to do this right. And I only want to do it once. But this gives me an insight of what I'm up against next year for my Maasai Red because uh, she is also growing, whoa, seed pods. She is also growing to the edge of the pot that she is in, which is exactly the same size as this one the fires was in. So that's going to be something to be addressed next year. It seems like every year I have one major project that takes all day just to do the project, just to do the repot. And then it takes another oh, 48 hours for the cleanup, including LECA, etc. Until all that is back in the storage buckets. <laughs> so this one, last year it was the division of the Berioda. So I already have my plan for next year cut out for me. But I have to do the Maasai Red. So can this come out or do I have to use both hands? Come on. Thank you. Okay, we have beautiful roots going all around, filled with lecker. But what I'm going to do, seeing as some of them were attached to the old pseudobulbs, I have the new roots from this piece coming. So I am going to sacrifice a part of that root system. to make sure that the orchid at least isn't stressed out by being exposed. We're dealing with a terrestrial, semi-terrestrial orchid. And as much as they are tough cookies, I'm telling you, this is a disturbance of the highest order. And this piece is carrying a seed pod. Now the seed pods have been on for four months. They're in actual fact ready to come off, but I have to 
consider making their little waxy baggies to store them in. So this looks radical and that is because it is radical. But I don't think it's a good idea to be sitting and fiddling with every single root. All right, one down. And then we're gonna deal with all the dead roots that are left on this piece. Into the calcium and magnesium bucket it goes. Terrestrial orchid, same, same characteristics like an epiphytic orchid. You can see the steely and then the spongy kind of outer texture that just like any epiphytic orchid, same, same. However, the Fias also has some hairy structure, texture around the roots, the velamen, just like a slipper orchid has. But there is no difference when it comes to the Fias roots. And if they have been wet for a very long time, exposed to a very water retentive media, they will collapse very, very easily if not kept wet. So this is why I'm, you know, trying to focus on what is best for the root system as opposed to what I would prefer to do and just sit and pick away, peel away, etc., etc. That's not what's going to be doing the orchid any good at all. Me wanting to insist on how things should be done. I have to go by what the orchid requires. There's a fantastic root tip right here. And yeah, these are now very, very important. So although it would appear that I am rushing things, cutting corners, as a matter of fact, no, not at all. My interests, my preferences are out the window. Okay, this looks like one big mess, but it won't be, not for long. Firm roots, same thing as any other epiphytic orchid. They are alive. Anything that feels a little bit compromised, a little bit soft, those are dead. Now I've got great root tips down here. And I can be a little bit more liberal with what I leave on the orchid because she is terrestrial. So if I leave dead matter down here and I'm not going to be picking out every single root, that's okay. That is okay. Okay, I'm gonna switch the pieces out, do the same thing with the other one. This one goes into the CalMag now. This one doesn't need much. Cutting the back bulbs off pretty much took care of all the dead roots that would have been otherwise attached. So that's going to be all right. Just some of the little brown root tips, a little bit of grooming here. Doesn't take much for this one. But then I'm going to go into the kitchen, clean out my big pot clean out my works table here. <laughs> Looks a little bit like Dexter has been around to visit. <laughs> and pot them up together with you if you are still with me, which I thank you so, so much. And if you're enjoying this video, even if you're not enjoying this video and want to show some other person how a crazy woman is treating a fire's tank and villier after four years in Lekka and self-watering in an giant sized pot and having burnt the pseudobulbs you want to show anybody and share anybody the crazy lady doing this in southern Spain please feel free to do so I would really appreciate any share and also I would appreciate it if you would like the video or dislike the video based on what you see <laughs> this may not be to everybody's liking but either way let me know in the comments I don't mind people disliking my videos. What I think is strange is let me know because how am I supposed to improve on anything, delivery, commentary, anything, if you don't tell me what was wrong with the video. So I'm not gonna jump down your throat. 
there's a reason you've disliked the video and if that would help me out and prove what I'm doing so that eventually you'll like a video, that'd be great. Why are some videos better than others? For example, a little bit of feedback. It's awesome. I'm not here to not have a dialogue. I'm here to have a dialogue. And if that improves the quality of my videos, I need to know and I would really appreciate it. So like, dislike and share. Thank you so much so much i shall now go into the kitchen and clean out that big pot and everything else that needs doing so that the potting up is not going to be too difficult because again i have those seed pods to take into consideration and back into the calmac she goes Just when you think you've got a plan in action, you know, I was going to clean up everything and make it all nice to pot this orchid up, but <laughs> yeah, not while those roots are out of the media. So they have to stay covered like that until I get the pot ready, etc. So I'm going to scoot you over and let's have a look, see how I'm going to get this done with only two hands and my left shoulder. <laughs> And those stains are the reason I started to use bleach the first repots I did back in 2018, 2019. I can't stand it, but I ruined a lot of pots by using bleach and now I just leave it because my pots are expensive. See that? That's where I was gonna put the two pieces in, but based on all the roots they have, this makes no sense at all. Yeah, I was gonna downsize. <laughs> Let's just say the thought had crossed my mind and went straight through my brain. And yeah, we're not gonna do that. <laughs> In and out, so to speak. The next thing we are gonna have to get ready, <laughs> water. So I've got one shot at this and I don't want to be taking out the water again with the microfibers coming up too high. They need to be at least touching the reservoir down there. Now, because it's been a while since I've been working the roots and everything, the old lecker has dried out. So we've got a bit of a sellotape in here from earlier. <laughs> But we also have a little bit of a floating situation going on, which kind of muddies the waters for me because I want to see those microfibers. Okay, that's all of the lecker from previously, all that was in the pot before. So now I'm gonna get my orchids and see if we can't fandangle both pieces back in, still including the seed pods and leave her be for another couple of years. <laughs> okay, I have opposite directions of growth. I'm not sure I want that. There we go. That's better. Now, with any luck, I've calculated it correctly that one basket of large new lecker is going to stabilize the orchid so that I can let go. <laughs> and she is still a little bit too low in the pot, but that is intentional. So let's go. Okay. 
Okay, now I'm going to top up with the other lecker that was the smaller of the same pot from prior, just cleaned up. And we'll see where that leaves us. <laughs> oh, you guys, what a repot sesh. Give her a little bit of a jiggle. Oh my word. If it wasn't for the two seed pods, we would be able to let go. So I'm gonna have to secure that to the stake before anything else, just to make sure that the project doesn't go weird right at the end. And of course, I don't have the right camera angle, but maybe, <laughs> maybe let's just at least give it a go because I have to drain the pot. Oh, goodness me, okay. <laughs> before I fill that mask with the CalMag water that the two pieces were soaking in. I'm going to put her in her place. <laughs> My back is shot to bits. <laughs> oh boy, okay. I wanted the calcium magnesium in there, but that bucket from when the pieces were soaking, that water is too nasty to be pouring back into the pot. A lot of debris came off. And of course I couldn't resist. I did start to fiddle with the roots a little bit more in between. Yeah, 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 I know. So what is in that pot right now is just calcium nitrate at 300 parts per million. That's what I was using this morning for the rest of the orchids. That's what's left of it. It is definitely not enough in that pot. I'm going to have to add another batch just to make sure that at least the water wicks up. But for now, this orchid has had enough water. It has consumed enough of my time. <laughs> and I'm ready for a gin tonic, but it's not midnight yet, so gotta wait for that. However, there's one thing I want to point out. With all the shifting and maneuvering, what I wanted to achieve was the same direction of growth. I didn't really pay attention to the back here, right there, and if that starts to grow another new growth, both of them, where I cut the old pseudobulbs off, oh yeah, you guessed it, two years three years, if I'm still around, and if this orchid hasn't declined or gone elsewhere, then we'll be doing this all again, depending on how she responds to having been cut from the back. But other than that, behind me is a table full of carnage, and that's exactly how it's gonna stay. With the exception of the lek, I need to contain that, but I am so not cleaning that up today. I'm done. <laughs> it is exactly 7 p.m. And apart from fixing myself a fresh beverage, I have to tell you that since I started this, I have been going non-stop to stay on track, stay focused to get this done so that I don't have to revisit this whole thing tomorrow. Thank you for being here, for watching, for keeping me on track. I had you in the back of my mind throughout this entire process and you helped me stay focused. I really appreciate your time. Thank you for being here with me. <laughs> thank you for your support. And thank you for watching my mega repot Ooh, of 2022. <laughs> Yikes. You are so appreciated. But now I hope that you continue to have yourself a beautiful day. One condition though, please that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.